Does hyperbaric oxygen therapy impact your sleep? Does it make it better, make it worse? No real effect whatsoever? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Inside the hyperbaric oxygen industry, I would say that the majority of effect that people are looking for comes from repetitive exposures over a period of time. There are short-term benefits of hyperbaric, but for the overall majority of people using hyperbaric, they're really probably looking more for the long-term impacts than the short-term impacts. That being said, well before we start to see changes in disease state or changes in performance for people, one of the first things a lot of people report is improved quality of sleep. So does hyperbaric oxygen impact sleep? Absolutely it does. And for most people, it seems to improve that. We'll talk about how and why in a moment. On the flip side, there are some people or certain circumstances where it seems like hyperbaric may impact their sleep in a negative way. And so we're also going to cover that later in the video. As far as improved sleep goes, a lot of people do report within the first session or two, noticing that those nights that they're doing sessions, they feel far more rested and or got better quality of sleep. If they're actually monitoring their sleep with a wearable device of some kind, many of these people are also getting evidence of increased duration of deep sleep and REM sleep, as well as heart rate variability scores. Why are we seeing that? I think one of the reasons that we're seeing that is that hyperbaric helps to shift people away from being predominantly sympathetic or stress mode fight or flight into more of a parasympathetic autonomic state. In order to sleep well, which includes the releasing of growth hormones and other growth factors associated with healing and repair, we need to be in a very heavy parasympathetic state during our sleep to get the most recharge out of the time that we spend sleeping. So as hyperbaric shifts people into that parasympathetic state, it seems to improve the quality of their sleep. Well before there were all these wearables that people were using to track their sleep, that's something that patients have been reporting to us in the clinic for nearly 20 years. Now that we're seeing some of the evidence, it's quite interesting to see actual increases in the total amount of time people are spending in deep sleep, in the total amount of time they're spending in REM, as well as their improvements in heart rate variability, which essentially is measuring the parasympathetic tone. So the overwhelming number of people utilizing hyperbaric at various frequencies, at various pressures, for different strategies around their health, sleep seems to be one consistent finding that most people report as a benefit from utilizing hyperbaric, and it also seems to happen very quickly in their program. A quick note on wearables. Wearables typically accumulate data over a period of time and then start reporting that data back and then using that data to create like a summary score, sleep score, a performance score, a readiness score. Different devices have different names for what they call this, but essentially these scores are usually a result of this collected data put through an algorithm of, and a weight of importance and then given an overall score as a result. So I bring this to your attention because even though we see increases in deep sleep, we see increases in REM, and we see increases in heart rate variability, all of which are critical to know that you had a great quality of sleep. In the earlier stages, the first few weeks, maybe the first month or two that someone starts using hyperbaric oxygen, they may have a slight increase in resting heart rate. For a number of different reasons, many of the algorithms that compute your total score use resting heart rate as a very heavily weighted data point in their calculations. So even though three different aspects of sleep that I think are critically important, including the impact on your nervous system, are improving, that increase in resting heart rate often lowers people's scores. So if you're starting hyperbaric or if you've noticed that trend, don't be afraid. First of all, that's only one of a number of variables to think about. Number two, I believe that resting heart rate is weighted way too heavily inside of those equations. It should not be having that level of a negative impact on your total score, but even more so not to worry about it because that seems very temporary. After the first few weeks, the scores on REM, the scores on deep sleep, the scores on heart rate variability will either maintain or continue to improve, and then resting heart rate will eventually drop, and then your scores will actually skyrocket. So if you're utilizing a wearable, I'm sharing this information just so that you're aware. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. 
at thehbotcourse.com. We'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. One of the reasons that I believe resting heart rate starts to climb is because we use our sleep time for repair and regeneration. As a result of your hyperbaric exposure, you've driven more oxygen into the body, which now becomes a surplus of fuel for repair and recovery. And so as your body's doing a more productive job in the repair, recovery, and regeneration of cells and tissues, I can imagine that that could raise your resting heart rate one or two beats per minute. But the benefits of that elevated heart rate, if that's a response to the increase in your body's capacity for tissue repair and regeneration, far outweighs the negative of a few beats increased over the course of a couple weeks or months of your first exposures to hyperbaric. On the flip side, there are some people that do seem to find the timing of their session is critical in order to not disrupt their sleep or that hyperbaric in general seems to be sleep disruptive. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about that. Because of the shift of your nervous system back into parasympathetics that most people experience as a result of hyperbaric, many people come out of the chamber feeling very relaxed and calm. Some people do actually feel incredibly energized after their sessions. If you're like most people who get out of the chamber relaxed and calm, the timing of your session may not matter. You could do that in the morning and you just have a nice relaxed and calm day. You could do that at night and then go right to bed. If you happen to be one of the people that do experience increased levels of energy as a result of hyperbaric, then certainly your sessions should be early in the day. Doing them too close to bedtime and having that elevated level of energy before bed is certainly not going to serve improved sleep hygiene or improved sleep quality. So please keep that in mind depending on your response to the chamber in general. Also, different pressures and different percentages of oxygen may have different impacts on you. Lower pressure might stimulate certain pathways more so than someone else. Higher pressures may stimulate certain pathways more than someone else. And so also exposing yourself to a range of pressures depending on what your goals are, understanding what your body's response is, and then listening to that response and following through will really allow you to get the most out of this experience. So if you're utilizing hyperbaric and sleep is really important and it's a part of the goal that you have in line with your health, finding the pressure, percentage of oxygen, frequency and duration that really helps maximize your sleep would be really important. If what you're utilizing hyperbaric oxygen for is critically important for your health and that you can see that this is a relatively short-term protocol, a few weeks, a few months, but the result of this exposure is critically important for your health, and you're going to get this outcome that's really important for you. Meanwhile, during that time, it's disruptive to your sleep. You have to weigh the risks and benefits of that process and decide if that result is worth it. In the very rare times that I've seen an experience like this, once that protocol was finished and we either discontinue hyperbaric altogether or we move into more of a maintenance program around hyperbaric, that negative shift in their sleep typically will return back to normal within a few days up to a week. Yet they got this other benefit that was really necessary for either moving away from an illness or moving towards a new health goal. And that certainly outweighed the consequences of the disrupt sleep, which again, returns back to normal for most people in a pretty short window. Obviously, there are a lot of factors that certainly impact our sleep from stress levels to your meal time to what you actually ate to what else might be going on in your life to circadian rhythms to your sleep hygiene. There are a number of biological and environmental factors that can impact our sleep positively and negatively. And on some level, we all have different components of that interacting in our own lives, either improving or disrupting our sleep. What's been interesting to me in over 20 years using hyperbaric as a therapy, regardless of all these other factors, improved quality of sleep does seem to be reported by the overwhelming majority of people who utilize hyperbaric, even in the face of all of those other factors. So certainly for most people, hyperbaric does have an impact on sleep and that impact does seem to be favorable. Always appreciate your time and attention and I'll see you on the next video. As most of you know, I've been teaching and certifying people in hyperbaric medicine for the last few years. What was missing was a concise textbook on the off-label use of hyperbaric oxygen. There are a handful of textbooks out there. They're all exclusively on the 14, which are now 15, FDA-approved hyperbaric indications for hyperbaric use. There is not a single textbook out there 
on the off-label use, and most importantly, not a book that really goes into the detail of the mechanisms of action. You've seen my videos on mechanisms of action. You understand how important that is to me for you so that you could really understand where hyperbaric fits in this vast world of chronic illness. This book, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, is just that. It is the official textbook that will go along with all the courses that we teach, but it's also a standalone book. If you're looking to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen, more about the indications, the contraindications, the off-label use, the mechanisms of action, this is the book that you're really gonna wanna get your hands on. So click the link in the description below and grab yourself a copy today.